Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial grid. On this tutorial, we're gonna teach you how to use the shatter effect. Now the shatter effect is something that is used basically to blow things up in After Effects. Now there's a few different ways you can do it, uh, but this is probably one of the most common ones. And uh, I think uh, not a lot of people will actually touch on what all this actually can do. So let's go ahead and get started. So basically what the shatter effect does is it makes things go boom. Something like that. You see we have one layer here and one layer here. Really simple effect, but uh, if done correctly, you can get some pretty cool results. And uh, you can also, this can be in 3D space, but I'll get into that here in just a minute. So in order to set this up, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Composition, New Composition. Now I have mine set up in HD for 1920 by 1080. 10 seconds, 23.976, which is 24 frames per second, which is more film, cinematic. That's the way I like things. But I have this uh, little paper deal that I use uh, for my background, and I can bring that in. Notice how big it is. I'm just going to go ahead and scale that down by clicking and pressing Shift and holding it, and that'll just bring that down in uh, one instance. So I already have that. And now, what should I do? Okay, well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into the effects presets. You're gonna click, uh, you're gonna type in shatter. So just go ahead and just go shatter. And that'll bring up your shatter effect here, and then you'll crop that over or pop that over. Now, as soon as you get it into uh, your composition, you can notice that it's already doing some things that, uh, are basically preset built into the effect. Now if you press spacebar you can see the wireframe mesh just go nuts and it just breaks apart all this stuff and basically it's just the brick wall it's pretty much the standard preset for this effect. So boom it goes boom. Now there's a few things you can do uh, you can either keep it on this type of view or the wireframe but usually most people go into a rendered view which will actually show you what it looks like but it'll have to render out all of the components for that so it's rendering a light that it actually built into the plugin as well as all these different little uh, layers around it so I mean it's good if you have like a really high processing computer but not so much if you're just using a standard no, no, four gigabyte computer like I am right now, but um, I'll probably just keep mine rendered. Uh, now the next layer down, you have shape. Now what your shape does is pretty much controls all these little. Uh, I'm going to call them particles because that's kind of what they are. Because every time you bust one of these out, that just creates one particle, and you have your repetitions and all that stuff. Uh, what most people use under the shape is uh, the glass. Now you have a couple different ones that uh, you can use. I mean glass looks like glass. Most people use that for destroying things. I mean you can do hexagons which looks more like a honeycomb. Uh, planks which will look like wood. Uh, a lot of the times I actually use this on a ping layer and I actually move the camera and you can get some really cool effects with the planks because it looks like falling wood so you can get like some debris and stuff like that which is pretty cool. Um, let's see here, I got the rhombi, you got a bunch of different um, little things you can choose from. But what I'm going to focus on is uh, the glass. Alright, now we also have what's called the repetitions layer. Now the repetitions layer is how many of these particles we're going to have. Now the more particles we have, the smaller the particles are going to be. So we're going to go ahead and bump that up and look how many particles you can get. But notice how bogged down my computer is getting. It's because there's so many freaking particles going on. 88 particles more. I want thousands. That'll basically kill your computer. Look at that. Look at that. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. But anyway, I'm going to bring it back down to 10 just for sheer sake of this tutorial. Alright, we also have the direction of the particles. We want them to be going out at you 
uh, you know, I mean, you can move them around like that if it was like a spinny bomb or whatnot, but usually I don't really mess a lot with that. Now, the extrusion depth is something I do like to get into. Now, the extrusion depth is how big or thick these particles are. Now, this is at point 20. You can bring that up all the way to however big you want it to how, look how cheesy it kind of looks, but... Uh, usually I put mine down at a 0 .5, 0 .10, just give them that really thin kind of glass look. That looks pretty good. All right, now we have our shape done. Uh, the force layer basically brings out uh, how big this radius is going to be. So the bigger the radius, the bigger your explosion technically is. So we have this small radius here which uh, basically just explodes out of one little, little portion of this little glass wall. Now this is cool. Actually, I'm going to leave that there. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. Just one little explosion explosion out of the wall there. Um, and strength, the stronger this is, the, the uh, further the particles or the glass is going to come out at the camera. So also the faster it's going to be so if we're gonna manipulate a bullet hole we have that just flying out boom right out at the camera just pretty cool but I'll show you a couple other things that's gonna make this look a lot better here in just a minute Now, force 2 I don't really get into a whole lot just because I don't use it hardly at all most people will just be using the force 1 so I'm just gonna go ahead and not touch on that now the physics layer is um, a layer I kind of want to do touch a little bit now we like to have this as random as possible um, th that way it's not just really really geometric and I don't know the more random the better I think it usually looks just because it's not like <sighs> things are flying out at you you want this to be just kind of random it looks more real that way now you also have the rotation speed you can make them rotate out at you uh, or uh, you can have them go the other way or you can just have them kind of just fly out. The viscosity is how how much they actually stay intact. So the more viscosity, the not so good. It's kind of like having uh, like an air level that actually tends to uh, stop all the particles. So that's not good at all. I don't. I don't like viscosity. Uh, mass variance really not going to really touch on that. Gravity is how far this go or how fast that goes down. Of course, gravity. Duh. Direction is if the gravity goes down or goes up or goes side to side, depending on where you're wanting it to go. And gravity inclination. That's just more down or more up uh, for that gravity level. Now, textures. You can actually texture the each and every little mode of uh, these particles. So you can have, like, whenever this particle jumps out, you can actually make it to where this particle has, like, a front layer and a side layer, and then make it look pretty much just as textured as possible. But I'm not going to do that in sheer sake, because that's a whole other tutorial that I'm going to create here in a little bit. And let's see here. Camera position. This one... I really want to touch on because you can use the actual camera that's built into the plugin which you can move from side to side up and down flip it and you can actually move this in 3d space to where you can get these particles kind of playing around which I personally think is awesome but is you can actually go into layer new camera hit OK and then go back into your camera position and hit comp camera and you can actually move this around with the actual camera that's in your composition so you can move this layer wherever you want and whenever like say that window explodes with that bullet going through it you can have that actually in your composition and you can move that around uh, wherever you need it to go as long as you're tracking really well so that is a really really good tool that I definitely uh, encourage you guys to use Let's go ahead and get back here. Go back, back. All right. But I'm going to keep it like that uh, for sheer sake because it is awesome. So bring that back down. Now we also have a light. Uh, the light's pretty important. Um, if you're just going to use the comp camera because the comp camera will actually take comp lights. 
So you can choose the lighting color, the intensity of the light, the depth, as well as the ambient light, which the ambient light means the more ambient light, the brighter everything is going to be, or the closer the light, the more spot it's going to be. And then uh, we also have the material layer, uh, levels. You can actually choose whether or not this is reflecting or not, um, which is pretty cool. It's not the same as the lighting level. This is literally not the same as the lighting level. Uh, this just really uh, requires, like, if there's other things in this object that's actually going to be reflecting whatever is actually in your composition. So, now that we have all of this uh, said and done, and you now know exactly what all of these little uh, plugins do, we're going to go ahead and create the shatter effect that I want to show you. So, probably the easiest way to make this shatter effect work is since we already have this one small shatter layer uh, created, just go ahead and duplicate it. Boom! Duplicated. Now you're probably thinking, great, it's duplicated. Now what do I do? What you're gonna do, you're gonna go into this shape layer here, and you're going to uh, see this little button right here that says render. You're gonna hit that all button or the uh, drop down menu and you're just gonna select pieces. Now, this is only gonna render out your pieces here. Duh. Okay, and then uh, under where it says repetitions, you're going to go ahead and bring that up and you're just gonna make those repetitions smaller. That way, you uh, it's going to be making this look as if you have these little small glass particles just busting through this wall here, which is a good thing. And I also want to bring down this extrusion depth because I want these particles just to be real small. Real small, like 0.2. Yeah, that's looking good. And it just gets busted. Straight up busted. Boom. Boom. All right, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it again. I'm gonna duplicate that one more time. I'm gonna bring up my shape layer, and I'm actually going to make them even smaller, I think. So repetitions, more repetitions, and boom. Just absolute chaos. Love it, love it. Now, since I have that camera in here, say I wanted to, right when it explodes right here, I want it to go out and show this entire thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my camera, hit P, position. So it's gonna start here, then as soon as it gets over here, boom, it's going to go out. Now to make this look even more real, you can uh, put on motion blur. So what the motion blur does, it just basically just blurs it out for uh, any, any motion that's actually happening in the composition will actually just be a little bit blurrier than uh, everything else. So anything moving will have that blur on it. Yeah, explosions. Cool, but that is pretty much uh, how to use that shadow effect layer and pretty much what all the little buttons do. Now, there's also a secret hidden uh, plugin about, or a secret little hidden thing about the shadow effect that I'm going to be posting right after this, which is actually making 3D text with the shatter plugin. So uh, make sure to click on that. I'll have a little thing on the bottom of there uh, of the uh, video. So make sure to check it out. But uh, thanks for checking out the video. Make sure to comment below, subscribe, uh, share the video, and uh, show me what you guys are able to create. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.